Welcome to Chrome On Air, live webinars from Chrome Enterprise. You are watching Best Practices for Enterprise Browser and Extension Management. My name is Nurika Bufard, and I'm a browser specialist on the Chrome Enterprise team. Let's get started. We'll dive into the browser usage in the enterprise. Then we'll walk through how to best manage your browsers from the cloud. And finally, we'll look at some tips on extension management. So let's set the stage. First off, why are enterprises choosing to move to a modern browser? The way we work is changing, and the evolving role of the web in enterprises has a large part to play in this. More and more work is done on the web today, and thanks to industry trends moving away from native cli client apps towards HTML5 standard web apps. In that context, the browser has become a core part of the business critical application stack. And as you can see from these statistics shown here, both IT admins and IT workers are seeing this shift firsthand. In many cases, it's about making your enterprise users more productive. That's also where management comes in. Admins configure, con configure the browser to work optimally for their environments, from having the right printers and printing defaults configured automatically to installing the right video conferencing extension for their provider. But it's more than just productivity. With the rise of cloud-based enterprise applications, more and more enterprise data is flowing through the browser. That data needs to be secured. And mitigating security risks is a top priority for enterprises. For some enterprises, the need to manage their browser comes from a compliance or regulatory perspective. Enterprises operating in heavy, heavily regulated markets will often lock down specific features for the browser to reduce risk or enforce business needs. With the bulk of enterprise user activities shifting to the web, the browser needs to play an active role in an enterprise's security strategy. And that's why the need to manage the browser has been increasing. It's a great way to achieve your enterprise's productivity, compliance, and security goals. Chrome supports a very rich set of browser policies. As an administrator, you have access to hundreds of browser policies that allow you to configure almost every aspect of Chrome. Here are some examples where enterprises often rely on browser policies to achieve their business goals. Deploying presets to make the browser more integrated in your enterprise. Controlling updates, ensuring that the browser is up to date and protected from vulnerabilities and managing extensions. Enterprise admi admins want to be able to manage extensions or simply need to control what types of permissions an extension can request. Additionally, some enterprises have expressed the need to install business critical extensions. We'll take a look at how Google approaches extensions and recommended best practices later on in this presentation. So how are enterprises managing Chrome today? One option is to use your platform's existing management tools to set Chrome policies. If you manage Windows devices, you can set policies using group policy objects to configure the browser. We offer ADMX templates to make it easy to set policies on Windows. We also offer options that are appropriate for Mac and Linux. The second option is for enterprises that already have G Suite or have adopted Google Identity. Those customers can use Google Admin Console to set their cloud policies. When their users sign into Chrome, Chrome fetches and applies these user policies. But each of these approaches have their own set of drawbacks. In the case of existing platform management, a simple policy change that needs to be applied across Windows, Mac, and Linux might take di three different administrators to use different tools, and will each have their own deployment cycle. It can be a fair amount of extra work just to set a policy. And in the case of user profiles, the administrator needs to ensure that all of their end users have Google accounts and sign into Chrome if they want to be sure that the policies are enforced. So that option doesn't apply to many enterprises today. To solve these challenges, we released the Chrome Browser Cloud Management last year, which provides an easier way to manage Chrome deployments of any size, centrally from the cloud, across Windows, Mac, and Linux, from the same console where an enterprise can manage other Google services, including Chrome OS devices. The good news is that it's easy to implement. Your end users do not need Google accounts to receive policies, and there is no need for your end users to sign into the browser. You can set policies across platforms in one place. You'll also gain deeper insights into your deployment. With this new capability, administrators can immediately see information about the policies that are set, the current versions of the browsers, and which extensions are installed, and more, all in one place. The first demo we'll look at is browser enrollment. Enrolling browsers into Chrome Browser Cloud Management is very easy. Once your administrator account is created, you can sign into the Google Admin Console, navigate to the browser management pages, and create organizational unit structure. Once your structure is created, you can retrieve an enrollment token for the organizational unit that you would like to enroll browsers into. With that token, you will use your existing tools to set one last platform policy on the devices running the browsers that you will want to enroll. 
Once that token is set, the browser will enroll itself into the Google Admin Console and receive machine-level browser policies from the cloud. You can also choose to enable the optional cloud reporting functionality, which will send some helpful information about the state of your browser deployment to the Admin Console. Here you'll see how to retrieve an enrollment token from the console. We'll start with an admin logged into the Admin Console. They'll first navigate to the Browser List page by locating the Manage Browser card in the Device Management section. Once in the Manage Browser page, they'll retrieve the enrollment token for one of the organizational units that has already been configured. And from here, an admin can push that unique enrollment token out to the specific OU. Not shown in this demo, but once the machine receives the enrollment token, Chrome will note that it is now managed by the admin console and will enroll into the cloud, and they'll see a new managed browser in this list. Next, let's take a closer look at the sorting and filtering options that are available on the browser list page. From the device list page, we can use search and sorting to quickly get insight into the state of your fleet. We'll sort by browser version to find Chrome browsers that haven't been updated in a while. Those machines might be good candidates for applying the relaunch notification policy to ensure that Chrome stays up to date. In this view, we'll go over some of the browser details that you can obtain if you choose to turn on the optional cloud reporting feature. Here you can see that the admin has clicked into a specific machine, and they have a lot of information available to them about this machine. You can see the extensions that are installed, which policies are set on this specific browser, and what plugins are installed. Next, you'll see to set a new browser policy on an organizational unit with Chrome Browser Cloud Management. We'll navigate to the Browser Policy page. A quick scan gives you a brief view of the types of policies that you can set. You can use the search box to find the cloud reporting user setting and turn it on for the whole organization. Once set, this provides more insight into your browser deployment. Opting in is what adds a lot of the information that you've seen in this demo so far, including the extensions list page. In our last demo, we'll take a look at the browser extension list page. This page is particularly handy if you want to get an overview of the extensions that your users have installed across your fleet. Here, we will navigate to the browser extensions list. We can see how many times an extension has been installed across your entire enterprise. It's even possible to force install extensions from this report view. You can choose to force install by OU or across your entire organization. Chrome Browser Cloud Management gives new insights into your fleet. Deleting a browser results in the associated information being deleted from the admin console's storage system. We provide a data takeout function that allows you to have full visibility and control of your data in the cloud. So with all that data that is available, organizations are now empowered to make the decisions on how to balance user productivity while also mitigating security risks for their company. A great example of using the insights from Chrome Browser Cloud Console and applying them to finding a balance between user productivity and mitigating risk is by managing extensions. There are two primary ben benefits of extensions for enterprises. The first is customization. Users can tailor Chrome's functionality and behavior to fit their needs, or enterprises can enforce enterprise-wide browser behavior across these devices. The second benefit is productivity. Extensions can help users with their personal productivity, and enterprises can help develop custom extensions or use third-party extensions that can enhance their users' experience. However, there are challenges with managing extensions. Enterprises need to create a vetting process for extensions that are requested by their end users and workflow for IT admins to manage the extensions that have been approved for their environments. For those customers not yet using extension reporting that we demoed earlier in the Chrome Browser Cloud Management piece, it can be difficult to make policy decisions without understanding the possible impacts to users. So let's look to different approaches to managing extensions. There's the more traditional route, which involves whitelisting and blacklisting extensions. And then there's the enhanced management route, which is what we'll be covering in more depth today. By using traditional methods, enterprises can face a lot of challenges when it comes to extension management. Whitelisting and blacklisting doesn't account for when an extension is sold or updated. It doesn't scale for large organizations, and review times can significantly hinder user productivity. But let's look at how managing extensions by behavior can enhance how extensions are managed beyond the traditional method. The benefit to this approach is that it scales. It increases user productivity by giving access to more extensions and better mitigates against risk from changes to extensions after that first point in time evaluation. The paradigm here is that extensions are not managed one extension at a time, but rather the behavior extensions generally are managed. 
extension can have one or both types of behaviors that are categorized in two ways, by device permission and by site permission, or otherwise runtime host controls. Let's look at the device permissions first. An extension might want to have device permissions to control your camera or to view someone's desktop. In the initial vetting of an extension, this could be approved. But what happens if that extension updates and asks for a new device permission, like access to your clipboard? With the traditional approach, this would not be controlled. But if you set device permissions to not allow clipboard access, then this extension will become disabled and will not run if it were to update. This would minimize your risk to installed extensions that may update with changes that would not be approved according to your security policies. The other category of risky behavior is around what site permissions an extension can have. There are extensions that can require access to all sites, and this can be risky since this would mean access to all sites, including precious corp sites, for those extensions that have been whitelisted by traditional methods. But by managing extensions by runtime host controls, you can set a global policy to restrict all extensions from running on those corp sites that are deemed sensitive. By doing this, you have more confidence in knowing that any installed extension will never run on your corp sites unless you've given explicit, explicit exemptions to do so. And the benefit to users is that they can install more extensions from the Chrome Web Store without having to request or be blocked by more restrictive blacklist policies. Just as this graphic depicts, an extension can be installed and run fine on sites outside of corp sites, but will not work or run on corp sites. For many admins, this is a low-hanging fruit to apply an extension policy that will provide added security and gives way to opening up more extensions to their end users. Summarizing the benefits of managing, managing extensions by permissions. Benefits are enterprises are protected from extensions that change or are compromised after first being approved, reducing exposure to risk. At the same time, you have more confidence that you can make more extensions available to your users, providing a better user experience and increased productivity. Being able to protect your precious corp sites with a global setting protects you from all extensions versus having to protect against one extension at a time. The added benefits are the savings of time for both your IT and security teams, focusing their time managing extensions that require exceptions for the business and save them from having to review changes or updates to extensions only on an as-needed basis versus with every update or change. If you're interested in getting started in looking at managing extensions via permissions, this is a good outline. The first step is getting a handle on what extensions are in your environment, and the Chrome Browser Cloud Management is a free and easy way to get started. From that first audit, you can then create a policy based on device and site permissions that you will want to restrict and present these findings to your stakeholders. You'll next test these new policies and establish an operational process for new extensions or updates to extensions. Finally, review the results from the test and eventually roll out the new process to production. So what's next? First, head over to g.co slash Chrome Cloud Management to sign up for Chrome Browser Cloud Management. Second, test enhanced extension management for your enterprise. And finally, check out all of the latest documentation for step-by-step -step instructions on how to bring these best practices to your organization. Here's a good starting point for some great resources to get started. The extension management white paper goes into more depth about implementing extension permission policies. So thank you for tuning in. Please visit Chrome on Air with Google.com for more content from Chrome Enterprise experts.